Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a bar of bars chart. Now this particular chart is similar to, in concept to a stack column chart where you have the individual series of data um, separately and then also you have some kind of visual identification where it shows the total of it. So these individual items, items 1 to 5, all these sum up to 261 it, for the widgets and these two hickeys, item A to E, the sum of all these equal 432 and these thing, thingamajiggies, A1 to A3, the t sum total should equal 222. And if I press the F9 key to recalculate these, you can, whoops, let me control Z to undo that. If I press the F9 key to recalculate this, you will notice that it recalculates here. And just, just the feature of uh, this particular uh, rand between function. I'm just choosing random numbers between 10 and 100 here. And this particular area is just summing up the values here. So this is the total for widgets. This one's the total for doohickeys. And this is the total for thingamajiggies. So that's the way that you need to set this table up in order to create this chart. So as long as you set this table up, you have each kind of column. You have each column uh, for the items here and then you also have corresponding columns to represent uh, the total of these individual rows and you can see the total is the same in each uh, row here. So once you have that data set up you can create this chart. And I'll show you how to create this chart. Let's copy this and put it onto a new sheet. Control C to copy. Actually probably easier. So I'm going to delete this chart and start fresh. Select the chart, press delete, and I'll select my range of data, go to insert, and I want to insert a bar chart. So I want to insert a 2D bar chart. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Whoops. Make this a little bit bigger here. Get rid of the legend. And I'm going to select one of the bars and Press Control 1 to bring up the uh, format data series. I need to change the series overlap to 100 because I want to have the bars overlapped 100% and change the gap width, the width between these particular each of the columns. Oh, I think I only selected that one. Let me un, let me select this in. Select that again. Let's see if it selected it. So let's see if that worked. I, I know I only selected uh, this particular series of data. Let's go back here and select the gap width to zero. Press tab. Let's see if it, it does it correctly. Yep, it did it for everything. So that's good. Now what I want to do is take a look at the individual data and I want to move things around. So when I go into select data, this is under the design tab, I want to go to select data and I want to move uh, the series, anything that says total, and I want to move them to the top. So let's move widget to the top first. Let's move that to the top. And then we're going to move doohickeys to the top. You can see, as I've done it, it correspondingly moves it. So let's move doohickeys to the top. Let's move that to the top. You can see that it's moved it up there. Whoops, doohickeys come after widgets. So let's put it at the second. And the total for thingamajigs should be third, right after doohickeys. Now you know, now you notice that it corresponds, right? Click OK, and we have the beginnings of that chart. What I want to do here is now just fix the colors because the color scheme doesn't look correct. What I want to do is make this a darker color. And the overall bar here should be a gradient lower, uh, lighter than the, this color. So let's make the, whoops, let's select out and just select my range of data here again. That, I'm going to go and select that, go to fill, and select solid fill. Let's give this a color. And I'll pick colors down here. So the overall target, the overall total bar, I'm going to pick a lighter gradient up there. So since this is green, let's pick this green. And for this green, let's choose a lighter green, right? Do the same here. This is kind of a nice orange, so I'm going to select that, keep that one. 
that's the top one. Let's select this one. Uh, actually, that one might be okay. It's within that color scheme. I'll select a lighter gradient here. Oops, did not select the correct one. So let's select this one and select these bars now and select a lighter gradient there. This blue looks good. Let's select the orange or this orange yellowish color and select a lighter gradient of blue. Let's figure out what that blue was first. I'm going to select that. Whoops. Select this. And which blue was it? It's this blue. So I'll select this orange and select a lighter gradient of that blue. So now it's all kind of nice. So the lines to separate it could be a nice white border. And once I selected this, and under the Form of Data Series, I'm going to select this border solid line and select a white color solid line. Select my other item here. Let's select that and do the same thing. White color fill and do the same thing for the last one here. White color fill. All right. And it seems like there's something actually missing here. Did I miss something here? Because it didn't include the uh, widgets and doohickeys and thingamajiggies. Oh, one thing that I neglected to do is probably did not include this column A. So let's go into uh, select data and let's see where we can fix that. Probably under this uh, edit horizontal category, I'll click on edit and let's see where it worked out. Oh, okay, the, the label range is starting at B2. Let's include uh, column A, right? So if we include that column A, column A, click OK. We see now it's worked its way in there. Also, another thing to think about is since it started with widgets and ended with image jiggies, we need to reverse this order and have it the same order as this. I need to click my sheet, press Control-1 to get back into my format navigation pane. Let's see if it's here. Let me select that. No, it's not there. It probably is in the access. So I'll click on the access and now you notice that the format access is there. And let's click on the access options. Click on the drop down here and this is what I want. I want to make sure that the categories are in reverse order. Once I click on that, now you'll notice that widgets come first and it corresponds to the first item here. And then the thing the jiggies come last. Close that and I've got my bar of bars chart. What would be nice is to have labels here. So I'm going to click on the bar chart, right click and select add data labels. So that add the labels here for the widgets, select on any one of the series here for the doohickeys, right click, add data labels and select that one and do the same here for thingamajiggies, right click and add data labels. And there we got some data labels there. Now I want to add a data label for the larger overall here. And I can just select any one of these, preferably something in the center. So I'll select that value in the center. You can notice that once I selected the gradient fill here, it, sh it selected all of these. All I want is one of them to have a data label. I'm going to click it again and right click, add data label. And it'll just add a data label for that particular portion of it. So that's what I want to do. And the same here. Click that, click it again, right click, and select add data label just for that middle one and do the same thing here. Click it, click it again, right click and add data label. And I've got my data label just for that particular portion of that series. Once I click out of here, you can see now I have my bar of bars chart and it wasn't actually too complicated to do, but it becomes another way where you can have a series of data and you also have the total for that particular series of data. So instead of doing a stacked bar chart, you might want to consider doing something like this to give your particular data some different look and feel. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.